finally, let's have a look at how we would repeat the simulation many times. Um, and why do we do that? Um, so it gives us a much greater accuracy um, when we repeat the situation many times, if, especially if we're doing any averaging. So for example, if we want the average rate, um, then it's much, much, much better to run the simulation many times, get the average of um, those averages, and that will uh, approach our true average, if that makes sense. That's the central limit theorem that I'm quoting there. Um, and we can also get a good idea of our min and our max possible returns then too. So we run the simulation many times, look at the worst case scenario, look at the best case scenario. That will give you a good um, kind of idea of what your best and worst case scenarios are um, for this portfolio investment. Bear in mind, again, the simulation does not take into account bear markets, uh, financial crises, um, recessions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just kind of with everything running as you would expect. Um, okay, and we're gonna use Excel's data table to do this. Okay, and um, we can also collect other measures based off of this beta data table, the standard deviation, the confidence intervals, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go have a look at this in Excel right now. Okay, so here is our entire simulation. We've gotten our net future value, our internal rate of return, and our net present value. Um, and um, let's again go run this many times to have a look at the end uh, account balance or the net future value after a bunch of simulations. Um, so to do this, let's just do the following. In Excel, we just uh, make the top line of our data table equal to um, each of these values uh, from our one simulation and of course cell reference them. So that's the B19. That's the B20 and that's the uh, B21 here. And then we highlight the whole data table. Notice I've hidden most of the rows here. Uh, so highlight the whole data table. In this case, I'm gonna do 100 runs. Um, you could do up to 100,000 might be a good idea. Just be careful. Save before you do that, you might crash Excel. Um, and really, if you're getting into that many runs, that really gives you good accuracy. Uh, for sure, good accuracy. You might not want to use Excel, which is a graphical interface. Anyways, moving back onto here, I've chosen 100 runs. Again, you should choose more in general, but let's just run with that for now. Go to what if analysis after you've highlighted the whole table, go to data table and put nothing for your row input cell. For your column input cell, put a blank cell. Again, this forces Excel to go down these columns and we don't want to add any formula on top of what's already in there. We just want to use this formula for each one of these, which is just a reference to these values here that are based off of your simulation. Uh, we just want to redo those each time. So basically what it's going to do, it's kind of a sneaky way to make Excel rerun our simulation, in this case, 100 times, or how many ever times you make the data table um, go for here. Okay, so there's our data table. Never double click within your data table, just so you know. Um, you can only click once and have a look at what's in there or change the top row or click and delete everything, but never actually double click within there. Okay, now uh, next thing we can go get, um, we can go get our um, our averages for everything. Now, let me just unhide um, these values. So let's have a look here at our averages for each one. Um, and let me just pause the video and um, edit this table a bit. Okay, so in our case, we're going to run 100 samples. So I'm just going to put in 100 there because we ran 100 runs. Um, let's look at um, the average um, ending balance after those 100 runs. So every time we get a different ending balance, they're all quite large. Um, sometimes they're very large, sometimes not so much. Let's look at the average of that. That will give us a good idea of our overall average. I'm just going to zoom in a bit more here. Note that our rates of return are very high. We put our average rate of return at 20%. That's quite high. So again, very easy to change that later. You can just go change that value. Um, standard deviation of those values, I use stdev.s. I assume this is a sample. Control shift down to grab all of them. Um, let's also look at our min and our max values of these account balances. Let's see our best and our worst case scenario. So equals min and equals max. Lowest over these 100 runs was 6 million. Highest, 53 million. Notice these values are going to change every time we hit enter. Again, the only way for them to almost stay perfectly the same every time is if you do many, many runs. The trade-off is you're going to bog Excel right down. 
let's look at our average uh, rate of return, our yearly rate of return from these and see what it is. So on average, 20%, that is very good. Um, and guess what that is? That's the 20% we fed into this simulation. If this were a more complex simulation, you might get a different amount there. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're roughly at 20% return, which is wonderful. Uh, and our average net present value, so the average amount we're essentially earning today by making this decision and investing that money, it's just the average of all of those net present values, uh, 3.9 million. And again, every time you hit enter, you're going to get slightly different values because 100 runs is quite a small amount. But yeah, so it looks like a great investment. We're working to earning 20% on average. Um, the least we'll ever have at the end is 5 million. The most that was 45 million. So huge swing there. Um, average ending value is 16 million. So way different than the 45, interestingly enough. Uh, standard deviation is seven. So there's a, a large variation here. Um, and our average basically gain today do, from doing this investment is like earning 3.885 million today to make this decision. So looks like a wonderful, um, wonderful full portfolio to invest in. Uh, one more last thing that's nice to try. I'm going to pop this in 10 and a half and 4.75. That was historically roughly what large company stocks made on average. Let's have a look with those values in there. Let's make it a little more realistic here. Then things drop down a lot. The smallest we're going to make is one and a half million, largest 3.8 million. That's just about right um, for the scheme, except for we haven't accounted for any bear markets or, um, any other recessions or any large financial crises that can occur. Um, so without accounting for those, if you did this plan, you invested, let's say, in large company stocks, roughly this was their average returns um, over the years. And so if you put in what we put in, which was the 20000 at the start, and then these investment amounts over time, you should end up with, on average, about uh, $2.3 million at the end of 30 years.